Okay, so the purpose of this segment is to talk about examples of eutectic phase diagrams that we'll come across, uh, just to demonstrate they really do exist and to look at some microstructures that we form in reality rather than just looking at schematics. So the first one we're going to look at is the lead tin eutectic. The lead tin eutectic has a solid lead phase that's got quite a lot of solubility for tin, something like 15-18% tin by weight that you can put into it. And you see that because lead and tin have quite different um, uh, molar masses, then the atomic percent tin scale is quite different to the weight percent tin scale on the top and bottom of the diagram. Pure tin, beta tin, that has a very little bit of solubility for lead in it. And between the two, there's a big, deep eutectic. So pure lead, that solidifies up at 327 degrees C. Pure tin is at 231 degrees C. And then the eutectic itself is down at quite a low temperature, 180 something degrees C. And then there's the big liquid plus lead region in between, a big liquid plus tin region. And then below that, once you've gone through the eutectic temperature, there's an alpha, uh, beta and tin region. And typically phase diagrams are presented like this. This is taken from the ASTM website and they're typically presented in this fashion. So we only write down the phases in the single phase regions and we let the user recreate the two phase or more if you're in a ternary or something like that, the two phase regions. So let's look at some microstructures. So this is the eutectic alloy in the lead tin system. Here we've just got interleaved lamellae of lead and tin. If you ever want to work out which phase is the light phase and which phase is the dark phase, the answer is to look at the phase fractions. The which colour is which will depend probably upon the imaging method you use. If you etch it and look at it in light microscopy, it depends on which one etches with lots of pits. If you look at it in um, SEM, it will quite often depend in backscatter, at least, at least, on which one's got the higher atomic number Z. And so the eutectic alloy, really you want to look at the phase fractions and the phase diagram, calculate what the eutectic fraction should be, what the fraction of sorry, beta or alpha in the eutectic should be, look at what the fractions are in your micrograph, and then you'll figure out which one is which. Here's an example of a lead tin hyper eutectic. So that's one which is to the left of the eutectic temperature. Um, sorry, to the right of the eutectic temperature. This one is hyper, that is it's all energetic. So hyper is all energetic, so it's more. So this is hyper eutectic, it's got more lead, um, more tin, sorry, it's lead on the left hand side and tin on the right hand side. So it's more tin, so it's hyper eutectic, so there's lots of white phase. This is a tin rich situation. And then what we're seeing is we're seeing uh, dendrites of primary tin. So in this particular case, the tin has solidified uh, as fingers growing up. They're called dendrites because they look like trees, um, called dendritic growth. And that's very often how solidification occurs. And you'll see that when you do some zinc casting experiments. And in between, it's a hyper-eutectic alloy, so we've got some primary tin. And in between, we've got our eutectic. The other side, we could be a hypo-eutectic. Hypo is all sleepy, it's the opposite of hyper. So hypo is to the lower number amount in the lead tin diagram. So this one has dark primary lead uh, dendrites within it. So it's got dark primary lead dendrites. And they are, again, they're this dendritic sort of structure. It's as if you've sliced into a tree and you're seeing the trunk, some of the trunk and some branches in section. And there we've got dark lead, um, and it's so it's hypo, it's slightly sleepy. Now you might wonder why am I getting so confused about my hypo and hyper. The problem is it depends which way you round you draw the phase diagram. And the convention is actually that it's alphabetical. So uh, P comes before S in the alphabet, so lead would go on the left and tin would go on the right. But that's just a convention. If you look at iron carbon, the iron carbon phase diagram immediately breaks that convention and it's the most common uh, material used in the world, most common metallic material at least. Um, and there we have iron as the primary one on the left because usually the dominant element that we're interested in the phase diagram we have on the left. So immediately I can think of an example where we break the convention. But um, hypo and hyper are either side of the eutectic in the commonly accepted phase diagram for that system. And so here's our summary slide. 
This is the lead tin system. We have hypo-eutectic alloys and hyper-eutectic alloys, and they are uh, near-eutectic alloys that are to the left and to the right of the eutectic itself. And in between you have the eutectic alloy, the special alloy, where it's solidified all to the eutectic phase. Let's look at a couple of other examples. This is the aluminium silicon eutectic diagram. And you see you've got an aluminium phase. Aluminium melts at quite a low temperature, 660 degrees C. And silicon melts at an enormous temperature, 1400 degrees C. Aluminium's got a little bit of solubility for silicon, but silicon has almost no solubility for aluminium. So the silicon phase field there on the right is very, very, very much just a straight line, has almost no solubility for aluminium at all. And there's a eutectic down at 577, there at about 12.6% silicon in weight percent. Um, and in between, we've got a liquid plus aluminium region, we've got a liquid plus silicon region, and below the eutectic temperature, we've got an alpha plus silicon region. And so that's our phase diagram. Now, quite often in this course and in the data book, you'll see us present a shrunk version of it, which looks like this. Um, so that's where I've abbreviated the phase diagram and redrawn it, so as to give you something you can measure when you're in an exam. So here you've got the, I haven't shown any of the phase diagram at greater than 20 something percent silicon. But it's denoted that the silicon phase is pure silicon by the fact that I've labelled the phase regions liquid plus silicon and alpha aluminium plus silicon. So if it's a phase, we tend to give it a letter, but if it's a pure compound, we just call it by its compound name. So here the compound is silicon. So in this diagram, it is by convention clear that the silicon phase is 100% weight percent silicon because it's written as a liquid plus silicon, not as liquid plus, I don't know, some Greek letter dash SI. Um, so, and it's clear also that the aluminium phase is a phase that has some solubility because we've called it alpha aluminium. So that's the abbreviated phase diagram you see in exams. Here's another example. This is the silver copper phase diagram. Again, we've got silver with some solubility for copper, copper with some solubility for silver, liquid with complete solubility, and we have three two phase regions liquid plus silver, liquid plus copper, and silver plus copper. And that's what the copper silver phase diagram looks like. So these Phase diagrams just with these three, three, three phases in are moderately common. There are some of them around. Many phase diagrams, however, are more complicated because we have eutectic compounds we can form. So say we had an AXB, uh, X could be 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever you like. Uh, it looks like about um, A2B in this diagram. Um, so we could have a compound in between where we could form an intermetallic. And so in this phase diagram, we've got a liquid phase with complete solubility, an alpha phase with some solubility for B, a beta phase with some solubility for A, and an AXB intermetallic in between. So we've got three solid phases and one liquid phase. Now you might think, okay, that's now getting kind of hard to read, but actually it just splits into two diagrams. To the left of AXB, to the left and including AXB, we've got an A AXB eutectic phase diagram, just like the one we've been looking at in normal binary eutectics. To the right, and including AXB, we've got an AXB to B eutectic phase diagram. And again, that just looks like a binary phase diagram with two solid phases. And again, we'll be familiar. So we can split it into two, and then we've got two phase diagrams we can deal with. So here's an example of that's what that sort of phase diagram might look like, where we've got an intermetallic gamma phase with some solubility, some range of solubility it can take up. So it's an intermetallic where its composition has a little bit of range that it can take up. So if the compound had was a crystal lattice with uh, a set of A sites and a set of B sites, there would be some solubility for B on the A site, uh, B on the A sites, and possibly A on the B sites, or at least one of those two. So there'd be some range of compositions it could take up. So here's an example of a, uh, a phase diagram with a number of intermetallics in it. This is aluminium copper, and we'll look at aluminium copper quite a bit. It's the foundation for a lot of aluminium alloys. We've got an aluminium phase, we've got a liquid phase, we've got a pure copper phase, and in between we have a number of intermetallics, 
um, things like theta there at something like 54 weight percent copper. Um, theta is nominally something like Al2Cu. Um, you see in atomic percent it's about 33% Al. And then there are a range of others like those eaters and beaters and so on all over there. And there are some rather funny things like paratactics and so on you're not going to meet till second year. But the uh, left hand side all the way up to theta, well that's just a normal phase diagram. So quite often and in the problem sheets we'll just show the phase diagram up to the theta phase. So we'll only draw it to 54% in weight percent or so. And we'll draw it as being the theta phase as being theta Al2Cu. And then we'll do phase prob diagram problems just in that eutectic region to the left where we've only got two solid phases that we know how to deal with at this stage in the degree program. And so we'll look at those in quite some detail in some of the problem sheets. And that's it for the examples that we're looking at um, in this sort of part of the course show you a few of the phase diagrams. They are more complicated than the ideal quite often, but we can deal with that by just looking at segments of them. And that's what the microstructures look like for some of these eutactic alloys.